Hello everyone, this is Richard from Modern Healthspan. As we were going through our research on senolytics, we came across an interesting paper related to quercetin that we wanted to share with you. A plant-based compound, which is a glycoside of quercetin, was shown to extend the lifespan and health span of mice by 10% and had a significant impact on liver health. The active component of the compound is available as a supplement. First, a disclaimer that in this video, we are sharing a study that we found interesting. It is not a recommendation or medical advice. Here is the paper. The plant-based compound is rutin. In this study, they used the sodium salt, which they found to extend lifespan and health span in mice, including positive impacts on liver health. Here is the molecular structure of rutin. It is a glycoside of quercetin, where quercetin is attached to the disaccharide rutinose. We can see quercetin on the top left of the diagram. It is a naturally occurring flavanol, which is present in a number of plants. Here are the ones with the largest concentrations. Rutin itself has very poor solubility, so in this study they used the sodium salt, sodium rutin, for the investigation. They treated mice with rutin in their drinking water at 0.2 mg per milliliter. What does this mean in terms of a dose and how to translate it into humans? This is just some rough calculations with a number of assumptions, but let's see what we find. The average mouse drinks 4 milliliters per day of water. As mentioned, there is 0.2 milligrams per milliliter of rutin in the water, so this is 0.8 milligrams per day. They used male mice in the study, and the average male lab mouse, I used the C57BL mouse as a model, is 36 grams. So this is 22.2 milligrams per kilogram of body weight. If we use allometric scaling, the human equivalent is about 1 12th, so 1.85 milligrams per kilogram. And so, for a 70 kilogram person, that would be around 129 milligrams per day. They used a Kaplan Meier survival curve to look at the lifespan and perform metabolic analysis to see the long term effects. They particularly looked at the liver by looking at blood serum and the liver tissue. And they looked at autophagy flux, which is to say the amount of autophagy in the liver. Here, Hep G2 is a line of human liver cancer cells. And what were the results that they found? The treatment extended the lifespan of mice by 10%. It also improved the health span of the mice in some markers and behavioral tests. The mice showed higher metabolism and higher respiratory quotient both of which will help keep the weight and the fat mass down. Respiratory quotient is the ratio of CO2 produced to oxygen consumed by the body. This ratio differs if you are burning carbohydrates to burning fat. Carbohydrate has a ratio of 1, whereas fats are around 0.7, depending on the type of fat. So a lower number implies that more fat is being burnt. Routine increased autophagy both in vivo and in vitro, with a line of liver cells. And their conclusion was that sodium rutin extended lifespan had beneficial effects on metabolism, which were achieved by enhancing the autophagy activity in the liver. Here are the Kaplan-Meier survival curves. The mice were given sodium rutin starting at 32 weeks, which is equivalent to about 42 years for a human. From here we can see that the rutin treated mice had longer mean and absolute life expectancy. The mean increased by 79 days and the maximum by about 3 months or 90 days. Here are some of the results from the assessment of the mouse health. The fur quality on the treated mouse appears to be better than that of the control. The mouse also did better on a number of physiological tests. The aging score here is a measure of kyphosis, a bending of the spine that happens as mice get older, cataracts and baldness. The mean speed and total distance travelled are from the open field test, where younger mice tend to be more active when placed in an open space. This was when the mice were 14 months old. And the last one is the latency of the mouse on the rotor rod test at 16 months. 
In the rotor rod test, the mouse is placed on a turning rod. The measure is how long it stays on the rod rather than falling off. The senescent cell burden also decreased. Here they looked at beta-galactosidase, a marker of cellular senescence, and we can see here the count of cells expressing SA beta-gal was significantly lower in the treated mice, both by count and by percentage of cells. Here are the metabolic markers. The top graph here shows the metabolic activity of the mice, where we can see that the treated mice had higher activity and lower body fat. And the lower graph shows the respiratory quotient, where the lower numbers show more fat being burnt than carbohydrate. The authors attribute these benefits to the upregulation of autophagy in the liver. The first graph shows the higher activity of LC3, which is a protein involved in autophagy. And on the left we can see a higher number of autophagosomes, which are where content is collected in the cell to be taken to the lysosome for breakdown and recycling. So an increase in these indicates an increase in autophagic activity in the cell. According to Dr. Lee and his colleagues, our study strongly implicates that sodium routine is a promising drug candidate for targeting aging. We suggest that sodium routine could be used in anti-aging therapy and for treatment of age-associated diseases. Routine was first isolated from Gravelin's Ruta in 1842 in Germany. And since then it has been studied for many beneficial effects in the body, not all related to aging. Recently there was a study showing that it could help fight obesity by activating brown fat. It has also been shown to be protective against Alzheimer's by decreasing amyloid plaque aggregation, nitric oxide production and reducing levels of interleukin-1 beta and interleukin-6 in the brain. It has been extensively tested for anti-cancer effects including against leukemia, colon cancer, brain cancer and liver cancer. It has been shown to be protective to the eye in a diabetic model where an excess of advanced glycation end products is associated with cataract formation. This paper provides a review of potential benefits of the molecule and lists positive effects on hair, skin, bone, strength and many other areas. Overall it's a very interesting molecule which would seem to deserve closer investigation. I hope that you found the video informative. Please do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button for any new video release notifications. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.